face in the morning Makes me feel good, no doubt It's written now, signed and sealed Oh, this love letter never let me down So baby, put your sugar in me coffee Let me taste your sweet cream like a mommy Oh, I love it when you're down for your daddy Oh, she man, oh, she man, Jane Oh, this woman give me good time, good life Yes, she my sunshine Oh, this woman give me good time, good life Tell me what love is say Baby, come swing Hello, everyone, and um, thank you for joining us again tonight for our eight-part inner wellness series, part two, um, addressing cultural stigmas or navigating cultural stigmas in mental health um, with AAPI um, cultures. Um, but first, we just want to take time to thank our sponsors. This event is sponsored by Shoreline um, Community College's WAVE program. Worthy of achievement, validation, empowerment, and success for Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders. We'll throw the links into the chat about um, Shoreline Community College if you want to find out more information about this um, amazing program. Um, also, we are hosted by the Big Oost Radio. The Big Oost Foundation is a local nonprofit organization committed to building vibrant communities through youth development, art and culture, music and entertainment, radio, sports, and business. So shout out to Vince, who uh, allowed us to use this platform to kind of share this message. And this is also being sponsored by the Office of Equity and Community Partnerships at King County Public Health and Tacoma Pierce County Public Health's PI Task Force. This is part two series of our um, fall, our may kickoff event um, for our 2024 oceania health summit um, global impact island roots this is a health summit 
put together by our young professionals and youth um, who have collaborated with us to focus on four key areas that they identified as issues to improve health outcomes and health indicators within the PI communities. And one of them, or one of the biggest ones actually, is why we're here tonight is mental health and addressing stigmas in mental health. So, um, yeah, with that, I just wanted to pass it off to our amazing therapists, Sala and Scarlett. But again, thanks everyone who was able to take the time out of your evening and check us out. Is that my handoff? <laughs> that is your handoff. Yeah, I you appreciate it. Tag your in. Tag them in. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's community conversation. Oh, man. Uh, again, we all who are here and all who rewatch, we just want to, again, thank you for being a part of this community conversation. Again, we want to continue to thank King County Public Health, Shoreline Community College for for sponsoring uh, this this series so that we can continue to provide this information to our community. Uh, with that being said, my name is Scarlett Ekaroma. I'm a licensed manager, family therapist, and a boundaries coach. I've been in this field for over a decade. Uh, I work, currently work through my private practice, Elevate Healing. Not only do I see clients, but I get to do these amazing community conversations with my colleague, Sala, who she will introduce herself as well. Um, so tonight's community conversation, we'll be talking about navigating cultural stigmas in mental health. So a little housekeeping. If you have any questions, please keep it pertain to tonight's topic. And if you would like to share, especially if you are in the Zoom room, please don't hesitate to either unmute yourself, raise your hand, or put it in the chat. If you are in the Facebook lobby, we welcome you as well. And if you have any questions there, or if you'd like to join us in the Zoom room, you can put your questions in the Facebook chat, or if you want to join us in the Zoom room, let us know, and we can put that link in there as well. So with that being said, tonight's conversation is going to be an amazing, and it's another fun one that will be I will be co-hosting with Sala And um, it's we always talk about how, how fun and how these are our favorite conversations, every single one that we do. So that being said, I'm going to pass it on over to Sala so she again can take us on this amazing journey, community conversation around navigating cultural stigmas around mental health. There you go, sis. Thank you, thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. It's so good to be here this evening. Um, it's another beautiful evening in the Pacific Northwest. Um, the sun is shining, and so hopefully you got some suntan today. <laughs> hopefully uh, everyone that's joining here had, had a chance to just be outside and be able to like bask into the sunlight um, for a bit today. So, um, but we are so grateful because you could be anywhere else tonight, um, but you choose to be here to invest in yourself. Um, we like to think of these conversations or anything um, that has to do with mental health as an investment. You know, we think that it's like, it's a way that we get to invest in, in our mental wellness, just like being able to invest in taking care of ourselves physically. Um, it's also the same, the same goes for taking care of ourselves mentally. So um, being able to be a part of these community conversations, joining in, engaging with us, learning, um, but also share your, share your own experiences if you're comfortable. Um, ask your questions, like Scarlett said, it's just a way where, you know, we don't want to say like, oh, hey, we are the therapist, we know it all. No, we don't. Um, we just want to say, hey, remove that veil. Like, it's it's just us. Like, you know, it's an opportunity where our community can just access um, a licensed professionals in this field and be able to engage with us. So hopefully tonight's conversation, um, everyone will be comfortable to be able to like ask your questions. Um, and just let us know what you think um, about some of the things that we'll be talking about. So tonight's community conversation, as Scarlett and uh, Silly pointed out, it's on navigating cultural stigmas around mental health. And so, you know, of course, this is something where when we say stigma, it's such a huge thing in our community. Like sometimes um, not a lot of our community members are seeking mental health services because of whatever stigma that's there. So we realized that and we were like, Scarlett and I, as we're putting these series together, we say, you know what, let's just have a conversation about that. Let's just give space to where um, people in our community can just kind of like know a little bit more about stigmas and see how we can just all navigate these stigmas together. So that's gonna be our conversation tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and share screen and then we will get started. Yep. So again, while Salad gets uh, gets us set up, so if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to put them in the Zoom or on unmute yourself. 
Um, again, we just ask that you uh, keep whatever questions you have relevant, relevant to tonight's topic. Even if you would like to share a story, we just ask that you keep it relevant to tonight's topic as well. As Sala said, we do enjoy community engagement. And so, and it's okay, you will see us share our transparency and, and share uh, throughout this, uh, tonight's community conversation as well. So, Sala, are you ready? Yes. Do you see the screen? I do. Okay. Awesome. All right. So yes, tonight's community conversations, uh, navigating cultural stigmas around mental health. And like I said, um, as we continue on this conversation, I think it's just good to kind of have some, um, some, um, you know, a little bit of understanding of what stigma is. So again, sometimes stigmas can be like that mark of disgrace that's sort of, you know, associated with like just a, a particular set of circumstance. So it's, it's, it's just something that's almost like a blemish or something, you know, it's just so just think of stigmas as that if um, just to have like a little bit of baseline understanding, it's like a mark of disgrace that's usually associated with like um, a situation. Sometimes we um, put stigmas on people. So it's circumstantial and it's also like could be placed on people and situations. So we always like to sort of, you know, kind of put the layout of the land out there. So um, just so that you know what's coming up. So we're gonna, we already did introductions. We're gonna talk about um, mental health and what that is and then identifying the different cultural stigmas. We're gonna share some research because we don't wanna, you know, come off as like, oh yeah, we just, you know, these are just some things that we got off of Google. Like, no, we, we also are very, um, you know, reliant on what the current research says about these things. And so we want to make sure that we bring that kind of information to our community to keep you updated. Um, and then also my favorite part of this as well is just being able to like um, tie in my culture or tie in a cultural context. And as I go through this part of the of the uh, presentation tonight or the conversation tonight, um, I want you to just think about your own culture or, or what that looks like for your own culture. I'll be sharing a lot from my Samoan culture because I am Samoan. Um, but as we go through this, hopefully um, you'll be able to just, you know, see what you can draw from your own culture, whatever that is. Okay. Um, and then we'll be just talking about different ways that we can just navigate the cultural stigma. So we also like to just kind of throw like an engagement question out there. And so this is what we have as far as like, you know, engagement and please Type your answer in the chat. Let Scarlett know. Let Celie know if you're on Facebook Live. Um, but we just want to hear some of your thoughts. Like, what are some of the stigmas in your own culture when it comes to mental health or even seeking mental health services? What are some stigmas in your own culture or just around mental mm -hmm. health or even seeking those mental health services? Now, remember, as you're maybe trying to come up with a with your response to these to this question um again stigma could be that mark of disgrace it could be like just a strong feeling of like you know disapproval that um maybe a group of people have mm. on on something or like society have about something um stigmas could also be like just negative attitudes um, mm -hmm. negative ideas about, you know, a person's mental, physical, social features, um, or it could also be towards a group. So just wanted mm -hmm. to give more information on sort of what um, stigmas are. So somebody in the Zoom chat said it's not even an option to seek mental health. Oof. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't even think I learned about mental health till... <laughs> what I was like 28 <laughs> yeah 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 so I don't think there was really um it's it's almost like you suck it up and deal with it mm -hmm. like whatever it is you suck it up and deal with it so it was um I think for also for me when in regards to when I started thinking about mental health and how it's how it wasn't for people who look like me yeah. it was really for for white people if I'm honest mm -hmm. like it wasn't it wasn't for me as a Samoan woman to go mm -hmm. seek mental health because otherwise there's a whatever label somebody decides yeah. to put on you. Yeah. I think also maybe even like um like it wasn't, you know, when you're thinking of like it was more of like an affluent um 
service that was only for people that could afford it which completely not in my bracket growing up you know in my family <laughs> mm -hmm. you know it's like it's either you know trying to um you know sort of be able to like budget that whatever little money we have for food and bills or mm -hmm. you can take that money and go and talk to somebody wait a minute no mm -hmm. you know so it's like those sort of things that we have to like um, we had to yeah, sort of go through, yeah, navigate like growing up mm -hmm. in, in, at least in my experience. So it's in the chat, people said, yes, being told you're fia paalangi. Someone Oof. else said, someone else said from my son or from my son, more perspective, you read your Bible and pray every day and the Lord yeah. will take it away. Oof, that's spiritualizing yeah. dysfunction. That's another yeah. topic, another day. Um, and then right. Mm -hmm. Not having, we're not having resources. Yeah. 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 And I, and, and I. I think oh, like in regards to the the resources, like it's just that information is not shared, uh, shared enough because mm -hmm. the resources are out there. So that's why we always find these types of conversations important because when stop like for between Sal and I, we like know a, mm -hmm. a list of resources that we can give to our community. Yes. But if, if it's, if you're not in these types of spaces, you really, you really don't hear mm -hmm. about it because you often think it's for the others and whatever the others are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that like we don't um, like like it's like mental health um, or what we're going through in mental health like it doesn't exist, you know, it's just we didn't know about it. We didn't mm -hmm. know that we can address it, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that was also often my own experience growing up is it didn't like when I reflect back on it, I'm like, I didn't really even know about mental health at all, but it didn't mean that I wasn't going through mental health stuff, you mm -hmm. know, I could probably you know count so many times when i this this type of service would have been um really nice to be able to receive so but there were no resources on the island mm -hmm. i grew up in samoa so it's like I, not that i was aware of but now i can like go on facebook and they have like these organizations and groups that are going into churches and they're doing like a mental health focus and i'm mm -hmm. like wow that is amazing that was not there when i was growing up in samoa so mm -hmm. it is it's it's shifted yes which is nice to see absolutely mm -hmm. okay i think anything I think, else okay. i would just say last thing i think part of part of the reason it's shifting is because i think it's becoming more people have become more aware because the message mm -hmm. is out there about taking care of mental health because you know to see in american samoa that they have mm -hmm. these programs now and it's it's just it's it's amazing because it's yeah. it's typically unheard of yeah yeah and like i think like to add on to that too sis it's like it's like it's almost unfortunate because sometimes it's almost like it took a whole lot of things to happen mm -hmm. for something to change you know because mm -hmm. i remember a couple of times you know since leaving the island that you know there were just a uh, so many deaths suicides mm -hmm. you know yeah. For, mm -hmm. for something to, to, you know, for, unfortunately, for like our government to be like, oh, let's do something with mental health or, oh, mm -hmm. mental health. And so now there's like, everyone's pouring in mental health resources, yeah. but it's unfortunate that it like something had to happen, you know, mm -hmm. and lives were lost to where, you know, these services are now coming up. And like we said, like now it's like, there's so much more awareness, but mm -hmm. I think it's also because it took something to happen. Like, something yeah. drastic to happen in order mm -hmm. for these services to become available or for us to like, okay, let's not, you know, let's, let's go into our churches, you know, with this yep. stuff mm -hmm. and offer it as another avenue of help. Absolutely. Yep. We're good in the chats. It's okay. Yep. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Celie. Okay. You. No, no, uh, taboo. It's taboo, right? So mm -hmm. it's just um, you kind of pushed mm -hmm. away. I mean, I think to you guys said it all, but I, I just remember it's just a taboo topic, right? Just mm -hmm. don't talk about it, right? Just uh, yeah. again, I, I was the one who put the read your Bible and pray. Like yeah. he will, he will cleanse you <laughs> of those impure thoughts. Yeah. Um, and then even I think we did an elders thing together, right? And uh, the other thing is just misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like um, I think. Point. 
Mighty Mighty Mafofo was like mm-hmm. it was all this drama we had last year about that. Um, mm-hmm. But it was trying to navigate like what that meant. Um, yeah. You know, trying to translate those words into what it would actually mean in Samoan, right? Just kind of from mm-hmm. our cultural perspective. But working with other like ethnicities too, they've got the mm-hmm. same taboo of yeah, man, we don't talk about that either until it's too late. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's and it's 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 also interesting from from a male perspective that if they shared, it's it's almost it's a like a sign of weakness like mm-hmm. why you ain't got this together like you should yeah. you, like it's the common man up and it's like yes. wait wait hold on <laughs> boys Let's, don't cry like, yeah boys don't cry mm-hmm. this is like and so it's it's all of those cultural stigmas mm-hmm. you know that 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 impact our communities yeah oh yeah i embody that 100 percent like the oh, boys yeah. like, we got you <laughs> So you know? Let's talk about how we can uh, peel let's that back on. a little bit. Hey, let's move on. Thing. Let's move on to the next thing. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Before we go into silly uh, therapy session here for a bit. <laughs> okay, stigma. So, yes, so much we can. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those topics that is just near and dear to our hearts because um, I know just having this conversation um, is it's helping somebody. So we're going to watch a quick clip. Uh, we, I, we love showing this clip because, um, you know, it's our people, it's our community and more so like our, our elders that are sharing their raw responses to a question, you know, so we're going to watch this for a little bit and then maybe we can share a little bit about it if we got time. I, I think that you can talk about stress. Okay. Anxiety, you can talk about it, but mental. No. Mm. Okay. They don't call that Mendel. They, what do uh, they say? Crazy? Crazy. Mm. They label you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you talk about it, then you'll be labeled. You'll be labeled. You come, you, you, there's a mental okay. person in your family, mm-hmm. and no one is supposed to be. When, when you think of, when I say the word mental health, what is the first thing word that comes to your head? Embarrassment. Okay. Embarrassment. To the family. To the family. Um, if someone has a mental health issue, what's the first word? I don't you like saying it, but no, do it. Retard. Okay. But no, know. we just have Handicap. to be honest here. Handicap, retard. Yes. I have no idea. That's okay. fine. Seclusion. Okay. No, go with uh, what you said. Which one? Uh, retard. Okay. I don't know how to. It, it's really hard with yeah. the Pacific Island, the community, because we don't have words to right. describe right. what's depressing, what the bipolar American. is. Okay. What? They're all crazy. <laughs> That's the thing. When when we came from Tonga, we did believe we only learn about stress and depression here. Here in America. Yeah. yeah. And when uh, the diabetes, you know, if your sugar diabetes is low. And you are sick, and in the island, they think you are crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I think that then. you can talk about. So, what do we think about this um, this video? Because I I really enjoy the raw responses. Like even mm-hmm. some of the things that we Sili and we talked about, um, as far as like just that mm-hmm. miss understanding of what mental health is you know like one of the brothers said um it is a like almost like a like a disability you know Mm -hmm. i think he mentioned something like a disability um where in my mind i'm like no that that's not that's that's like a a, that's a disability it's a medical condition you know Mm -hmm. and so just having that like misunderstanding of like so you see someone with um, with a, a disability and you're like, oh, they got mental health issues, mm-hmm. you know, when it's like, eh, no, it's a medical condition, you know, mm-hmm. and even I when CD reminded us about when we did the Pikawa with our elders and how some of them were sharing with Scarlett, I think like phys- like a physical yeah. therapy to them was yeah. therapy, right, Scarlett? Yep. Yeah, they thought. Yeah, they they thought um, going to like physical therapy, occupational therapy was actually mental health therapy. So those are some of the stigmas that they had. They even thought, um, just like someone said in the video tonight, like 
they confuse they they take a lot of the medical conditions and think it's like mental health. So for example, someone in the elder class and in the video talked about having diabetes and medical yes. conditions mm -hmm. are completely different than what we're talking mm -hmm. about mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. really just um helping define what what that mm -hmm. that really is um in regards to someone having a mental health challenges versus medical conditions and their and the different types of therapy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And it's like even I think I think I think was it in that group or might have been one of the other times we run this class, um, but where they they thought autism was mm -hmm. a you know was a was like a, a mental illness you know it's like it's mm -hmm. it's kind of different like this is a spectrum so it's it's a little yeah. bit little bit different you know mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just like being able to like okay let's let's really talk about like what mental health is. Mm -hmm. um, and be able to like get the correct information, which is why I really enjoy these conversations where our mm -hmm. community can just like come and ask your questions. If you need clarification on something like, yeah. you know, you get to have full access to to licensed therapist mm -hmm. um, that can provide you with those responses. But, you know, yeah. just like again around stigma, um, stigma is just one of those words that like translates differently. And I think like, you know, even like what the in that video where the I think one of the ladies was saying like we don't have words for that in our language, mm -hmm. you know, so you know in order for me to even try and translate stigma into this into my someone language it's almost like i'm using like a whole bunch of words, you know, so it's like malam la manga le 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 to like you know try to think about like stigma or depression you know and it's almost like i have to like i'm describe like it's not a word but i'm having to describe what it is in my language you know so um when it comes to like being able to translate some of these like words into our own language sometimes that's also where um you know a lot of this like misunderstanding or different perceptions on what it is comes into play as well so, um, yeah. Did you want to add something to that, Scarlett? So we have a question in the chat. It says, what are some ways we can start the conversation with our families about navigating mental health in a way that makes sense to them? It's a good yeah. question. Yeah. This would be a... <laughs> I'm like, tell them to come to this class so you don't have to do it. Let us do yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, but this, being able to just send them the link and access mm -hmm. this conversation right here um and you know inviting them to come to this conversation where they can hear directly from um, a mental health mm -hmm. therapist um because even if it's like oh it's my family member let me just go ahead and google something really quick and see how i can talk to them about mm -hmm. this um you're explaining something that's there but you don't really have like the full understanding of like um you know maybe the research behind that or even explaining like some of those things that they're talking about in a manner that will really um help these people or your family mm -hmm. members so i would say like you know if if you are you know like noticing that your family member is experiencing um and need to be able to seek mental health services i would say just kind of give them like a gentle nudge to like referral like see a therapist mm -hmm. or even like this is why we have all of these community conversations it is it is like a step into mm -hmm. that direction yep. it is a step Absolutely. to where we can talk to them about what it's like to go to therapy it mm -hmm. is it is a step where we can talk to them about things like stigma um, mm -hmm. So if you are looking for something practical and something you can do tomorrow and tonight, this would be it. Just giving them this this link, letting them know about this and be like, hey, you know, they're just talking. They're going off about mm -hmm. something with stigma and mental health. Like you want to mm -hmm. know a little bit more about it. Um, and then they, they we also record these mm -hmm. so that you can also send these recordings to them so that they can have access to that as well. That's a good question, though. Yeah, just tell me, like, you were in this fire class with these two someone therapists who know what they're talking about, and here's the link. <laughs> yes. And, and, and two, uh, the only therapists in Washington who are Pacific Island descent, if my research is correct. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we're, we're working on, you know, getting more folks in their field um, yes. through that youth summit, right? Encouraging our young professionals to lean into mm -hmm. this. Um, one thing I was going to say, it actually reminded me of that uh, cartoon movie, Disney Mulan, 
when the, the Mushu was like, hey, dishonor to you, dishonor to your dishonor mom, dishonor to, your, <laughs> dishonor to everybody. So literally, I thinking of the person's uh, question in the chat, I feel like if you brought this up to your family, they're like, brother, what is going on here? Suck it yeah. up. You'll be all right. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that, and I can't remember which class where we talk about that. That even though we are a collectivistic group, mm -hmm. it is okay to address your own needs. Mm -hmm. Like, and we we really we talk about like, if you actually took care of yourself first, you're actually better to the family, better to the community, better to the event. But the more and more we keep putting what someone else feels that they should that they feel is best for us, that's where the challenge is, and that's where we see the, our people in our office. We see our people suffering, not just you know just in a just uh you know, just as an observation, like we see it like, you know, the stress, we see it, um, you know, what whatever negative behavior, you know, uh, that they're doing. And so that's the thing is just like, you know, to, to be a difference maker for the family unit, it is challenging because we're challenging the whole notion of how it yeah. has always been. And it's yeah. like, okay, if, if how is that always been, but is that actually helpful yes. it's just like can we actually do it a different way and because i always mm -hmm. say there's you can still honor your culture and your family and honor yourself we have Aww. to find that balance because mm -hmm. that's the things that sal and i talk about like how do we find that balance how do we continue to empower mm -hmm. our community and family but also empower ourselves so that we can continue to empower our community mm -hmm. Yes. So continue to come to these conversations because <laughs> we, will, we will leave you fired up. After. Yes. We'll leave you fired up, empowered, ready to go find a therapist and be able to utilize this this um, this avenue of help. But so this word cloud we got up here, these are all of the different stigmas um, that was gathered and just um, and what it is, it's as you can see, like some of these uh, stigmas that's on here um are you're already familiar with some of them you've heard from the previous video and the biggest one that keeps coming up is shame is shame so but of course like we see because i think like when we look at this from a cultural perspective it is you know because we are collectivistic in nature so when when i say i'm going to go and ask for help for something then i'm not thinking about just me i'm thinking oh my gosh what is everybody else going to think about my family and this is where the shame piece comes in. You're not thinking about, I need to take care of myself. You're more so thinking, your thoughts are usually around, oh my gosh, how is how's the whole village going to perceive my family? How is the entire church going to look at my mom, you know, and be like, oh, I saw her daughter's car over there at the doctor's office, you know, and, uh, um, you know, how what are they going to think about her? You know, so all of these things around shame, um, all of these stigmas around shame, sometimes it's usually because we are so collectivistic in nature. That means when we keep saying collectivistic is like naturally, like our communities, like we prioritize groups, we prioritize our family, we prioritize like the the entirety of the village. We don't prioritize individual. We don't prioritize ourselves. So this is why all of these things, most of these stigmas, when we when we look into it, is it's not more so like for myself or shame for myself. It's more so, what's everybody else gonna think about my family? What's everybody else gonna think about my parents? What's everybody else gonna think about like? And so it's a lot of that shame and that guilt um, is is what prevents people from being able to like go and get the help that they need themselves. Okay, Scarlett, you want to say something? Yeah, I think with within this in the the video, I think one of the biggest things is is the embarrassment piece, huh. because like we always we're, we're again like Celie said, we always have to have it together. And I'm like, and one of the things when I challenged clients when they said, I said, well, is that your rule or is that a rule you somebody told you and you're just continuing because you don't know what else to do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh. Okay, I didn't even think about it like that. So it's just, it's just a. This is why I love doing being a therapist yeah. and doing doing these community conversations so that we can start to shift the perspective a little mm -hmm. bit, whether it's a mm -hmm. little or, or it's a lot. So, um, someone in the chat said, "I'm fired up right now." Therapy for the whole <laughs> island. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> yes, I am here for it as well. Let's go. 
Let's go. <laughs> That's all we do. That's all we do. All right. So we're going to watch a short clip. You know, we like to like, you know, mix things up a little bit. Um, and so it's a quite a, it's a funny one. And so we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit about it after. Here we go. Hey, shh. Why you look sad? Huh? It's nothing. Oh, uh, okay. Mom. Mom. Hi, see? Yeah. Hi. Why you cry? Do you know I have mental issues? Uh, yeah. I know you're mental. Your dad knows you're mental. The whole family, we always talk about you. We say, hey. He's kind of mental, hey. Mental issues, yes. Mental is you. You are mental. <laughs> Say, mom, I'm being serious. Like, I have depression. What should I do? You just said it. What? You said you have depression. So just take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. I have anxiety. Oh, how exciting. Are you, are you excited? What are you excited for, son? You know what? Never mind. Okay, love you, son. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! <laughs> so, this video always, it always gets me because, like, it's funny, it's lighthearted, but at the same time, it's like, it happens. Mm -hmm. It happens, and there's still stigma that's there. Um, so, Scarlett and I uh, attended, like, we were invited to speak at a conference down in um, San Francisco recently. And we shared this video of this young man and then somebody that was there ended up like they, they knew him mm -hmm. and then messaged him and was like, Hey, your video is being shared at this mental health conference. And he was so excited. He was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I never thought my video would be shared at like a mental health conference, you know? So, um, but he absolutely, you know, is, is an advocate for mental health, which I absolutely love. And so good to see our, our young, someone men be able mm -hmm. to like you know say like oh my gosh there's there's value in this like yes it's funny um and and like it's it's gonna reach somebody because mm -hmm. it does happen it does happen with our youth so um i think it's it's always a good like lighthearted way that scarlett and i get to talk about some of the things that we need to address when it comes to stigma yeah. um mm -hmm. around mental health and some of that could be like for example for for him it was like I'm trying to bring something up to my parents, um, but at the same time, like just being dismissed, feel, you know, being like make like the parents kind of responding in a way that is maybe dismissive, trying mm -hmm. to tell my parents, you know, hey, I, I'm feeling like this. I'm feeling like I'm, I have anxiety. And, you know, it's again, like the parents response is like either dismissive or just kind of maybe ignoring the kid and not addressing it. And so sometimes it's often because they don't know how. And so just like with our communities, it's, you know, we always resort to humor. <laughs> we mm -hmm. always resort to humor as a way to, you know, to try and like, you know, get through things that's uncomfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. So I always, I always enjoy um, showing this, this little clip of um, this young man. So Scarlett, mm -hmm. did you want to add anything to this one? Uh, someone in the chat said that's another thing I feel we do is making situations a joke when we're when we're really asking for help. Yep, yeah, just like yeah. just like Sala said. And so the only thing I would is just add in that because when we are uncomfortable, we we go to jokes because oftentimes yeah. we don't know the words, mm -hmm. so we don't know what to say. So when you come that's to good. our feelings class, <laughs> we yes. help you find the go words. <laughs> so that's the thing is that's why we want to give the language in the words to our people to to continue to expand then typically what we what we uh learn yeah yeah because like one thing like we see like for example if we go off of that video scenario like we see the mom um you know being dismissive we seen the mom you know just kind of like ignoring so this kid is probably feeling not seen feeling mm -hmm. not heard you know trying to bring something up to the parents and <clears throat> they're not addressing it but at the same time we also see this mom being uncomfortable and mm -hmm. that's something that not a lot of people are seeing all they see is like oh that mom is so funny you know like mm -hmm. all the Samoa moms can relate to that mom you know but no that could be because that mom is uncomfortable because mm -hmm. my kid is trying to talk to me about something that I don't really know about like I don't even know how to work through that so mm -hmm. um the best way that I know how to deal with that is just to make light of the situation 
Yeah. And then it's like, okay, all right, well, you know, let's go on with our day. You know, yeah. so as, as for us, like we, yes, we see the dismissive part, but at the same time, we also see this mom being uncomfortable yeah. to be able to address those things. Yeah. I mean, just a real quick, like when we did, we did a feelings class with our, the elder, the Samoan elders. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that they had said to us, we just didn't know. Mm -hmm. We didn't know the words and, and for them to tear up and then <laughs> like, and thanking us for, for teaching them. And, and they want us to come back. Like this, this is come why on. we do, yeah. we do this. Yeah. I, I really like that Scarlett, like just to be able to go back to what you're, you're talking about, like they don't have the words mm -hmm. and that's why in, in the feelings class, like we are giving you the words we are, we, mm -hmm. we, we are walking with you um, and teaching you and empowering you, like how mm -hmm. to be able to identify what words, you know, you can add to your vocabulary that expresses how you feel like Scarlett and I will just go on and on and share our stories of clients that we've used what's called the feelings wheel with mm -hmm. and just how um, just how like they're able to see their own situation in a different way because now they have the words now that they're able to identify how they're feeling in, in all these different places like it helped them to understand not only themselves, but it helped them to understand their situation better as well. But it's because of those words right like in in our own languages like what was said in that other video we don't have the words coming from tonga coming from samoa coming from fiji like sometimes our language alone our native languages alone don't have the we don't have those words to be able to describe as i'd have to say a whole sentence you know so but we want to be able to empower you in a way where want to give you the words to be able to use so that way you can understand yourself better, but also the situation that you're going through. And then you can communicate that um, instead of resorting to other forms of expressing how you feel, which is usually um, not not good behavioral ways of expressing how you feel. So come come to our feelings class. All right, we said we were going to share some um, some research tonight. So these are just some of the um, research that we found recently as far as like and we share this as well with all of our other uh, community conversations that um, ethnic minorities like us a and HPI communities, we are very, very less likely, less likely than um, white people to be able to seek mental health treatment. We're more we're also very much more likely to delay treatment until symptoms are severe. All that is saying is we don't really utilize these mental health services. We don't as a community. It's not something that we do. It's not something it's not an avenue of help that we tap into. And as a community, we also tend to delay treatment like we're not, you know, we're not doing all of these preventative care type of things you know, um, to like when it comes to our mental health, sometimes even when it comes to our medical, like whatever um, medical concerns that we have, um, we don't, we, we just tend to sort of like, you know, push through like what Scarlett said er earlier, we tend to just push through and then we delay treatment until like symptoms are severe. Things like anxiety, things like feeling depressed, all of those things, we all experience those things. But as I said in our um, in our uh, depression anxiety class, if you sit in those things in those states long enough and you are ruminating on those things long enough, it will get to a point where those things become significantly um, critical to your health to where now it's like, OK, you keep you're not addressing these anxiety symptoms that are coming up. You're not addressing these depressive um, episodes that are coming up. So then it just builds up, builds up to where now maybe we're being very explosive in our anger. So that's another thing. And now we're behaving in a way where we are throwing things all over the place. What is that? That is us delaying treatment. That is us not seeking the help that we need um, when it comes to our mental health. OK. Um, and then also like another uh, research shows like it also affects how um, how our patients are expressing their symptoms and how they cope in the range of their community and family support that makes sense. Um, again, um, our AANHPI communities have the lowest rate of utilization when it comes to mental health services of all minority groups, um, which is like we see that like Scarlett and I see this 
um, in our in our own experiences, and which is why, again, we want to see about meeting our communities where they're at. Okay, so you're not utilizing these services. Now we're going to take ourselves out to the community. And so we're trying to go out and meet the community by doing these community conversations. They're not coming into the therapy space and sitting across from us because of however many barriers. So what we're doing is we are coming to the community and then offering these different conversations so that way our community members can just come in and be able to like get to know more about this um, avenue of help. Scarlett, did you want to add anything to this one? I think one of the things um, I don't um, in regards to, to the research funding is that what you know solid with the work that you and I do that a lot of times our people um, uh, will, will share their symptoms of what's going on in their body, yes. like massive mm -hmm. headaches, nausea, my shoulder mm -hmm. hurts, my, my, my back. And so those are places that where we hold what's going yeah. on with us. So in our, a study, I can't remember how long ago I read it, but it was talking about a lot of times people who, who um, suffer from depression, they often mm -hmm. hold, have lower back pain. And yeah. so there's an association with that. Cause I know our yes. people will always talk about like, <laughs> man, my body hurts. I'm not feeling right. good. You know, so yes. stuff like that is what, what we pay attention to for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Because, and I think like that goes back to like, we don't have the words, right? Mm -hmm. So because we don't have the words, we're more in tune to our somatic symptoms. So yes. anything that, so instead of like, you know, um, I am feeling, you know, sad i am feeling you know having the words to describe how you're feeling um that means our community members are more so saying things like this you know going to the doctor's uh, office and saying things like you know what you know for the past week i've just been you know experiencing these stomach pains and you know um oh is something going on yeah well yes you know i'm, I'm kind of you know experiencing difficulties with my son but you know and i've been having like all of these headaches and so you're describing to your medical doctor like physical symptoms like somatic symptoms of um what could be a mental health concern um because it also it all ties in together and that's what we we want to share with our community as well is like it's not just like oh it's in your mind and so you don't see it like no it it manifests in our body as well like it, it our body continues to keep the score of however it is that we're feeling and if we have been harboring you know feelings of like you know frustration if we've been harboring and holding on to feelings of you know um it may be irritation throughout the day throughout the week and you might think like oh, okay i'm just gonna push through like sometimes that really does have an effect on like your body. You could, you know, um, be experiencing like just maybe you're you're um, you're constantly just kind of snapping at people all the time. So now it's starting to come up in like different behavioral ways that you're responding. But all of that ties in together. So it's not that like oh your body is separate and then there's your brain and mental health and that's separate. Like no, it all goes together. It all goes together. It's a, it's a part of your overall well being. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments? Good. Good to go. All right. So this is the part where I say, you know, I like to tie into my uh, Samoan community and my um, my Samoan culture. So the picture that you see um, that is of the Samoan Fali Talimalo. So a Samoan Fali Talimalo is a Samoan meeting house that is. Um, sort of built specifically for receiving and welcoming guests. There's so many different versions of this, of a Samoan Falitalimalo. And Samoan people, you know, there's a much more modern version that you can see on the other side of the screen um, where they've kind of modernized the structure throughout time. But the picture that's in the middle is, is so amazing because like this um, Samoan psychologist out of New Zealand he put together sort of like this overall uh, therapeutic approach. And he says, you know what, for people, for therapists like Scarlett and I, um, for therapists that are wanting to work with Samoan community, Samoan people, these are the pillars. These are the things that are important in the Samoan community. And so he lists all of these different things. Um, and he's like, I think like what I want to take away from this approach that this uh, someone psychologist shared is I want you to know where 
um, psychological well-being is being placed. So if this Psalm 1 Fale Talimalo is encompassing of the things that are important in a Samoan culture, which obviously spirituality is at the top, that is uh, very important in Samoan culture. Then you have the culture, the customs that's at the forefront of the home. You have the gifting that's at the first step. But I want you to note where psychological well-being and emotional well-being, where it's located within this structure. And so if you can see, it's located all the way in the back. And it's such a visual representation of how the Samoan community sees mental health um, as a collective. It's like, yes, it's there, but you know, it's, it's back there. You know, it's, it's not at the forefront where it's, it's, or it's not at the top, but it's, yeah, we have it. It's, it's kind of back there. So it's kind of like we see as, a, as in my community, we, we sort of see this as like, um, as kind of like in a back burner. It's not really something that's in a front. We don't really, it's like, eh, we'll get to it when we get to it. But I think this is, this was the reason why I wanted to share this is because it's such a great representation of like when we, when it comes to culture and stigma and how a culture can see um, or view um, where mental health is. So this is where I get to say like, whatever your, um, your ethnicity is, whatever your culture is, I want, I wonder if there's something similar in your own culture that you can look at, just like how in my culture, we're looking at the Fale Talimalo. I wonder if there's something similar in your own culture to where you can sort of like relate to this, take, to, to take away from this model and be like, yeah, you know, and, um, and, and, and as a, as a Fijian community, this is how we see mental health. And we, you know, sort of also maybe, maybe in, in your community, in your culture, you put it in the, one of the poles in the front. I don't know, but it's just a way that we want to be able to like, Hey, take a look at your own culture. And I wonder if you can reflect on, um, how your culture as a collective views mental health. Okay. Anything you want to add to that, Scarlett? Yeah, this, this, you know, diagram is always interesting because like part of what, um, what, what we've talked about before in several of our classes is like how a lot of times in our culture, we still have that survivalistic thinking and to where it's like, if we don't do these things, our culture is going to be wiped away. So that's mm -hmm. why we have to put the emotional and psychological well-being in the back. And it's like, well, what happens if it's, it's a, if we don't have to be in survival mode now. How mm -hmm. can we, how can we meet in the middle mm -hmm. to where we can do all those things in regards to psychological well-being, mm -hmm. spirituality, emotional well-being, and still honoring customs. Our cultural right. customs can be um, just as important and not, yes. not the back burner because, be, and we, and I say that and, and because we, I see, I see our people in my mm -hmm. office who have challenges with it. And one of the things I always love to do, we talk about how to balance that, mm -hmm. how to truly, truly balance that. And that it's a, it's a, cause it's a very delicate conversation, especially yeah. cause you don't want to be, you know, cast out or isolated <laughs> if you decide to go against the grain. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, how do we navigate, you know, the balance of that? So yeah, yeah. this, I always love when you, when you, when you show show this this diagram and we have mm -hmm. a, a, a dialogue about it so someone in the chat said the irony is is that if if it crumbles the whole structure will fall down yep mm -hmm. you remove and i'm just gonna say that's what we see <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's, sure. it's it's true so yeah because uh a lot of the customs uh comes at the cost the health of our people a lot of times of course yep yep Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I, as you were talking, Scarlett, it just reminds me also of how whenever Scarlett and I are having these conversations around mental health, and we know that it's one, a taboo topic in our communities, um, we approach our communities, our AANHPI communities, we carefully approach our communities with the topic. So for example, like whenever we have a Samoan specific audience, like, for example, like we did a um, we did a, a session with the Samoan pastors and elders and, you know, all Samoan. And so we take these things into consideration. We understand mm -hmm. like the that number two 
uh, or the number one even we acknowledge the spirituality we acknowledge the culture mm -hmm. and customs whenever we before we even present before we even engage them in conversation we we go through the whole custom you know the acknowledgement in the beginning we we go through the you know thanking so and so and so and so because it's our culture it's our customs mm -hmm. we go through like the gifting we go through the collaboration we keep all of these different things in mind before mm -hmm. we can even get to the back of the pole and for mm -hmm. us to be like oh, hey look at this pole right here <laughs> you know yeah. before like we even get to um bring the attention of all of these different things that are important in this community and be mm -hmm. able to like well hey you know like you know but this one's being neglected for a little bit how can we yeah you know kind of shine the, the light on this just for a little bit so it reminded me of that of how we that's our approach that's really our yeah. approach and in, in these conversations in our aanhpi community is we are very culturally sensitive in our yeah. approach in the language that we choose to even mm -hmm. even even use in our conversations we are very careful because one thing like what scarlett always says is we're not here to take away from the culture Mm -hmm. Like we're not here to say, hey, this Western way of doing things is helping people and we need to use it. So, you know, come and use it. Like, no, we're not here to take away from the culture. Um, we're here to see how, you know, you the culture can be able to like open up and just yeah. consider it as another avenue of help. Yeah. And that's the thing. The one thing we emphasize with the with the the pastors is like, we're not replacing you all. We just mm -hmm. want to be an additional resource. And the the shift in perspective that helped them, mm -hmm. you know, and they were just like, oh, so now it's like they want us to come into the churches to teach about mental health. And that's pretty big because, yes. and that was the thing that with Sala was like, we know for the Samoan community, like everybody goes through the church, through the pastors. So mm -hmm. we had to reach out to them in order for them to say, hey, to tell their congregation, we have these two mental health therapists to come talk about this, these topics. Mm -hmm. So it's yes. really, it's really big, you know, so that, those are the ways because we know how to have those types of conversations mm -hmm. and we challenge them and they, yeah. they step up to the challenge and they are, they are showing yeah. up. And the, I think the, the part of why they are, are stepping up and showing up and being open to it is because we considered all of these things. Absolutely. It's like we we're Absolutely. not coming in there and stomping around and, you know, doing being all disrespectful. We yeah. are coming in there and we are considering all of these different aspects that's important to this culture. You know, so I think that's that's what's um, also like super important in, in them being able to like open up. Um, we did another thing down in um, in uh, San Francisco to where, um, you know, it's just a whole bunch of PI women that are there, you know, just a lot of uh, they're doing very successful women that are doing amazing things. But for us to connect with them, we continue to pull that cultural piece and mm -hmm. we continue to incorporate that into the conversation, which is why if you're here today um, and you're 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 maybe you're um, you're a, a community member that is wanting to do this, you know, just kind of like wanting to hopefully try to help your community open up to mental health. Like I would consider like what's important in your culture. What is important in your culture and how can you um, sort of be that bridging the gap person to be able like you're not coming in there and say, hey, I know better. I I have all of this new things that I you know need to help our people and I need to you know, like you guys need to go to therapy. But no, it's coming in a way that is humble and being able to like consider what's already in place and Absolutely. then going from there. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments, Scarlett? I'm going to move on. Nope, we're good. All right. So then we get to the part of the conversation where we say, where we then address the question of like, well, then how do we navigate these cultural stigmas around mental health? Um, one of the things that we, we absolutely continue to do is, again, like our wording, our language um, that we do. Um, and like, for example, when we were very careful in what we what we the, the different words that we're selective of and being able to use in our presentations and being able to engage our communities with um, it's like, for example, like instead of saying, how do we break this? Because we hear that all the time. How do we break the, the stigmas? You know, we need to break the stigmas. Now, I don't know if that context applies to like other culture, but I know that in, in um, some of our um, PI cultures, 
like some of those stigmas are really tied into kind of who we are as a collective, you know, like, for example, like the shame stigma, the stigma of shame, like that ties into, you know, because we are collective, like it's part of our community, we are collective. And so you are being considerate of your family, you're being considerate of your village, you're being considerate of your church. So we get that. So but at the same time, we don't want to stay with that stigma. So we know where the stigmas are coming from. And so we want to say and because it ties into our culture, um, we want to say, well, instead of like breaking the stigma, because it still ties into our culture as part of who we are as a collective, then we can say, how do we navigate those cultural stigmas around mental health? Because navigate is a word that is that we are familiar with as Pacific Islanders, being able to be um, navigators, going from island to island, being able to, you know, whatever storms they were facing in the sea, whatever challenges that like we were maritime people, like we stayed in the waters. We were going from canoes to canoes. We're going from one island to another island. I mean, today, the flag day, we just had a whole competition of like, you know, canoe rowing and stuff, a taxi race in Samoa. So we are people that are, you know, in, innately in us, we are navigators. You know, like they say in the movie Moana, we are voyagers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, we're very selective with the language that we use um, whenever we try to bring mental health into our community. So one thing we always say is make sure that you know and understand your culture, because I think like, you know, for, you know, for for us, like if we were to go into a uh, all Samoan audience, um, you know, we know what is important in the Samoan community, like in that um, structure that I just showed you. So, of course, we're going to pull from that and then we're going to find a way to be able to like have that conversation um, with our community. And then also um, being able to maintain awareness of how our culture sort of interweaves with those Western concepts. So, again, we're not like coming in there and we're not like, you know, saying like, hey, this Western way of doing things is so much better. So, uh, you know, stop praying, you know, like, no, we know that spirituality is at the top of like, you know, the things that we that we're, we're doing in our culture. We know that it's important. So we're not going to come in there and say, stop praying. Like we're going to say, yes, keep praying. In addition to you can you can keep praying and still see a mental health therapist. Like you can pray and go to church and still see a mental health therapist. You can go to church and pray and still take your medication. Like sometimes it's even normalizing those kinds of things um, and not be able to, to say like, oh, no, no, you know, like prayer doesn't work. Like, oh, you will be ruffling some feathers in the community <laughs> by doing that. Um, and then, of course, like identifying the stigmas in our culture. Like we just went through tonight's conversation, being able to like point out what some of those stigmas are. We saw shame. We saw, um, you know, embarrassment. We saw like maybe even financial burdens in there. There's all different kinds of stigmas that are attached to our culture. But I think it's important because I think if we can point that out, if we know what it is, we know what those stigmas are, then the more we'll be able to navigate through them. And then just having an open dialogue or a telenoama. I think the more that we keep talking about it, the more it normalizes mental health concerns um, within our communities. So even, even with these conversations that we keep running, like we've, it's, I think going on two years now, we've been running these conversations. And one thing that we always, Scarlett and I are always advocating for, for our community partners is continuation. We need to continue. We need to keep talking about it. Like we can't just, you know, do a, a session and then like, all right, we're good to go. Check the box. We're done. Like, no, we need that continuation, especially in our collectivistic communities. We need to see that all the time, because the more that we keep talking about it, the more we keep normalizing all of these different mental health concerns that come up. Um, and another thing, too, is um, we're not waiting for for things to happen. Like we want to be proactive um, and being able to, like, get the resources out there, get the information out there. So that when things do happen, people already know because they see our faces all the time. They see these classes all the time. They've been in these conversations all the time. So they know exactly what to do. And that's sort of what we want. 
And then lastly, being able to seek reliable information. Fams, there's so much information out there. I mean, you can go on TikTok and it feels like everybody's a mental health therapist up in there. Um, but you have to be really, really careful where you are getting your information from. Okay. Um, you, you, I mean, I've had people come into my office and they have already diagnosed themselves. You know, I've had people come into my office and they're like, you know, I saw this on TikTok and this, this girl said that if you have this, 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 and this, and then, then you have, um, bipolar. And I think I have bipolar. And I said, ma'am, negative. <laughs> that is a no go. <laughs> Ma'am, that is a no-go, okay? Like, no, there's so many misinformation. Like, you don't even know if that girl on TikTok um, even has a degree. They're just over there just doing, you know, videos or whatnot. So make sure that you are finding reliable information because that is really, really helpful. So we've listed sort of some sites that um, that are reliable um, and it's, it's very uh, reputable websites like the National Alliance on Mental Health or NAMI, um, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the Asian Counseling and Referral Services in King County, uh, Cowlitz Tribal Mental Health, Kent Youth and Family Services, Seattle YMCA, um, and then also uh, I didn't add in their um, APCC as well. Um, these are all like local. These, these are not only national, but also local. And then also like through all of our sponsors, for example, um, if you, if you're just like maybe always tuning in to Big Goose Radio um, and you're like, bro, like, what is that? What is that one? Like, how do you get in touch with those therapists again? The one that did the mental health thing for sure. I'm sure they will have our information. Um, if you are, you know, attending Shoreline Community College, um, and they, they can also be like, I think our host, um, from, uh, partners at Shoreline Community Car uh, College, they also have our information so they can connect you with us to where we will provide um, much more accurate information for you. And if we, if Scarlett and I don't know um, about, you know, how to give you the, whatever it is you're asking for, for sure, we will point you to the right direction. Okay. So it's really, really important to seek those reliable information just because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Okay. Um, so take a snapshot of this page so you can have all of the information on hand um, as well. But I think Scarlett also have like a cheat sheet that um, she usually puts in a chat for all of our conversations. But Scarlett, did you want to add anything? Um, keyword reliable, <laughs> reliable resources, please. I think the one only thing I really wanted to add when it comes to that first point, know and understand your culture is, you know, I just want to encourage everyone, don't be afraid to ask the elders for their, their stories, you yeah. know, to hear their stories because that's the one thing that Sal and I have been finding out, like our elders share their stories and just to hear them talk about not just what they experienced, but also how culture was for them growing up, mm -hmm. you know, so to really understand the development of what that is and how it got, got, got to where it's at. And so, and, and I'm not a friend. I'm, I'm also a nerd. I like learning. So <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I just enjoy the learning part about it and just and just hearing hearing stories. Um, so someone in the chat said raising awareness in our community is crucial for dismantling barriers to accessing mental health care. I grew up in a deeply religious household where mental health issues such as depression or anxiety were considered inconsistent with Christian ways. The belief was that prayer alone was sufficient was a sufficient remedy. Oh. There's so much to unpack, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I and and thank you for sharing that because that's one of the things that why we are on this journey of you know destigmatizing mm -hmm. whatever it is the stigmas are about mental health, not just in the ethnic culture but the church culture, the gender culture, just about seeking mental health services mm -hmm. because like I said, what we're doing is not that's the thing is like we found out we're not replacing anything we just mm -hmm. want to continue to add on add on to our culture and just say hey this is another avenue for you yeah. that you can utilize yeah for sure mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that in the chat yeah, thank you go ahead Celie. Yes. oops uh, yeah i had a follow-up question from that um 
relative to a comment I got from a friend on Facebook, but like, about, how do you guys recommend keeping up that momentum, right? Like if, you know, you're trying to create this awareness with your family, close ones, loved ones, but then they keep pushing you down, right? And just, mm -hmm. again, I think you guys talked about it, right? About the continuity, keep talking about it. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about the fatigue, right? Because at the end of the day, you guys are right, right? It's not, we're not asking our AAPI folks to assimilate, right? It's not assimilation mm -hmm. by disassociation. It's acculturation, learning to love, you know, your culture, take that in. But knowing that we have this resource that you guys are providing um, mm -hmm. as another, you know, tool and folks toolkits to seek help. But, you know, I think this mm -hmm. comment was just like, it's frustrating, right? It's frustrating, mm -hmm. Um and yeah. it's hard talking to a wall. Um, but I don't know. Do you guys have any feedback, think, comment? Like, uh, how how would, how would you guys approach that? I, I think uh, it's just the, it's honestly just the continual, like, at the top of my head, it's just the continuing of having these conversations because these are still fairly new conversations. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're talking about going against hundreds of years of information versus something new now. Yeah. So it's going to take take a, a constant, frequent repetition to keep having these conversations because the more and more that you see people who look like us and share their stories, it's a different conversation. It's it's a whole different conversation because mm -hmm. if Sal and I just came up here and just, just did this but didn't share about our own stories re regarding all of this, it doesn't, it, there's a disconnect that, that happens. So again, the more and more we share these, share this information, share the stories, the frequency of it, it, that's what continues to help make a dent and how, in, in those types of conversations is what I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like, just to add on to that too, like, um, if it's to the point where, you know, you trying to reach your family members to receive these services and it's getting to the point where it's becoming, you know, overwhelming for you as an individual and then becoming exhausting for you to take on. I think like that goes back into, you know, just being able to manage things from what's within your control to do, mm -hmm. you know, and that's like a boundary. That's yep. a boundary because you have to recognize that, you know, you can only do so much when it comes yep. to another person, you know? So if you have done everything that's within your control to do um, as, you know, a friend or, or, or as a coworker, and I can see that my coworker really needs the help. And I've been telling them, I've been telling, I've been telling them to get the help and they're not getting, and I'm getting frustrated and I'm getting like, you know, tired of, of like me just trying to, I really want them to get help. But it's like, I think it comes to the point where you have to accept that there's only so much that you can do yeah because honestly like that it like that other part or that other piece is it's mm -hmm. going to be up to that other person but mm -hmm. that other control however it is it's going to be it's going to be on that other person and that's a boundary because sometimes like with boundaries and people get frustrated and and exhausted it's because they keep trying to reach over and mm -hmm. be able to control the other person like, yeah. hey, I, you know, like, go, go to that, you know, so it's like trying to reach over on the other side of the fence and trying mm -hmm. to fix my neighbor's tree or my neighbor's yard or just trying to control the situation on my neighbor's side of the yard. When really it's like, okay, I, the best thing that I can do is tell my neighbors to, you know, cut the tree, the branch that's coming over on my side of the backyard, mm -hmm. you know. But and and but like sometimes we'll get frustrated because it's like, you know, we keep telling, we keep telling and nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. I think then it comes down to a matter of boundaries. You yeah. know, how are you then able to sort of keep yourself in a state mm -hmm. to where you don't get exhausted and frustrated and just realize that there is only so much that you as a person, as an individual can do. And sometimes that's really hard for people to accept, especially yeah. when it comes to their family members and loved ones. Because mm -hmm. do you want them to get help? But yeah. the 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 fact of the matter is, like, no matter how much I'm, no matter how much resources I'm giving to this person, no matter how many times I've invited them to come to this thing, and they still don't come, like, that's because the decision is still up to that person. Yeah, I just that, and that's really good, Sala, because I think these sometimes it's just you just being the example. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you doing what you need to do for you. Like before we got on this meeting, I was asked, how are you doing? And I'm like, hold on, how am I doing? <laughs> and just really, instead of just doing the automatic, oh man, I'm good. I'm okay. Like I had to like, no, let me check in to see how am I doing? And it's those little things. Like even when I started sharing my feelings with my family, it was just like, wait, hold on. But then what I noticed in return by just me just doing it, what was best for me, they started doing it. So it's amazing. sometimes that you, like so I was saying, you can only control what you can control within yourself and I can control what I, what mm -hmm. I can say. <laughs> now that's helpful. Well, you guys are teasing some of those other classes that are coming up. <laughs> know your feelings. What are your boundaries? I'm excited for the uh, It's how viewers. we do. It's how we do. How we do. Uh, <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. And so we'll continue on to how else can we navigate cultural stigmas around mental health? Um, I think we've touched on some of these already, just being able to use those appropriate language um, age appropriately as well. When you're talking about mental health, like with your, you know, the way you would explain mental anything with mental health to maybe a 10 year old um, is probably different than how you would explain it to um an 18 year old and then to you know a 30 year old so age appropriate conversations about mental health can really help dispel some of those myths about um about uh, mental illness and and what somebody could be diagnosed with um and it also reduces the shame and the guilt around um around whatever the condition is um, and being able to create spaces and make people uh, make it easier for people to be able to ask for help. So language, again, like we've been stressing throughout this conversation is really, really important. It's really important. Um, and then some of the other ways we can um, navigate stigma is being able to um, learn, and explain the mental health condition to your support system and community. For example, if I am diagnosed with, you know, say, for example, bipolar disorder, right? And if I say bipolar disorder, bipolar is one of those mental health conditions that probably already has a negative uh, connotation to it because of like stigma. Again, you hear bipolar and all people see is someone that's happy and then crazy, happy. And it's like, you know, like it's just polar opposites. And that's what people see or something that they picked up from the movies where somebody was like have a, a mental health condition, it's, it's bipolar. So it's always like a negative stigma to it. But you know, when we talked about <clears throat> being able to um, to get the reliable information from the right people um, that's able to let you know, like, hey, if you have um, depression or if you have bipolar, this is what it looks like. This is what's going on in your body and your mind when you're going through it and you'll cycle through it. You'll have these episodes and it lasts this long and it comes on when this happens and really just take the time to explain the condition to you. Now that you understand what it is, I'm telling you, it really almost like removes your own anxiety about what it is. It removes your own fears because now you know what it is. I think a lot of the time when it comes to mental health conditions, the stigma is there because a lot of people don't know about it. They, they don't know really about depression. Oh, when somebody says suicidal ideation, ooh, everybody wants to stay away. Like nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody is like, turn the other channel and pretend like nobody says suicidal ideations, you know? But when you know about it, it's really different because then you understand. And now it doesn't seem so daunting. Now it doesn't seem so scary. It just seems like, okay, it's like having my, um, you know, it's like having like my, my, my ankle hurt or something like something's up with my, you know, my, my arm or something like, okay, it's a condition and this is what happened. And now this is how I'm healing from it. So when it is explained to you in a way that you understand and you get to explain that condition, like if you're here tonight and you know, you have a mental health diagnosis, find out more about it, find out the reliable information about it. And then if you're comfortable, like share it with people because you'll find out just how also freeing that can be because it's almost like it's empowering. You're empowering yourself and you're also empowering someone else because you'll be explaining to them about maybe whatever your condition is. So now they know, they know what's going on. And then also we say, make sure you seek support in your community. Um, and, and especially like when we're going through different mental health um, conditions, like um, a lot of the times people tend to isolate themselves. And we always say like, try to refrain from isolating yourself. Um, 
I think this is a time where we can tap into um, our collectivistic nature um, as AA and HPI communities. And we are able to like, look, seek out the help when we need to. So, and then especially for teens as well, support um, really helps them to be able to speak about what it is that they are, um, what they're going through. And then lastly, like advocacy, that's that's really big. If you are in a position where you can advocate for, for, um, for mental health and help raise awareness and advocacy can look like sharing the link to our wellness series. <laughs> that can, that is what like, I know advocacy people probably be like, Oh, you mean I got to go to Olympia to like tell them to like, hey, you know, fix some laws about mental like advocacy um, that's within your, you know, control as far as like, you know, practical steps. Like, for example, you can share our link. You can invite a family member, a friend to our next community conversation. That is what advocacy can look like. Um, it can look like telling someone else about our series. Um, and say, hey, you know what? They got some, sharing some good information. Also, if you have any question that you always wanted to ask a therapist, yeah, you can just go into one of their Zooms and ask your question, okay? So advocacy can look like that way as well. And then also with advocacy, it really does, um, you know, makes us kind of join hand in hand together um, and really does provide solidarity for our community and purpose. And at the same way, like this is how we're, we can continue to move forward as a community, um, especially around the stigmas with mental health. Scarlett, did you want to add anything to this? No, it's, it's, like, it's all, it's just all great information. And again, just even like Sala was saying, if you have questions, like we always say, even if you go home and you were like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't think to ask Sala and Scarlett this, still send it to us. Yeah. Like, answer it like we get those like we answer it because like I said that's how we want to continue to help our community uh because you may be afraid to ask it in front of the group but if you if you send it to us we will we will um we will answer it so in the um the event summary sheet our information is the second page is the second page of that then that's where you can reach us mm. yes and so that is our navigating cultural stigma conversation for tonight. So I just want to be able to give some space for any questions, comments, or if anybody um, have anything that they want to add for tonight's conversation. All right. Well. Oh, hold on. Somebody sorry. in the chat. It is, so somebody in the chat said, it is through initiatives like this that I feel empowered to support my children and normalize mm. discussions about mental health with them. I hope I can turn, I can in turn share what I learned with my parents, family, and friends, recognizing that every person we educate can positively impact a family or individual. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, that's why we, one of the, our, our when Sal and I got together, um, to put this series together, we said, mm -hmm. how can we continue to empower our community and that they leave empowered? Yeah. And that, because the one thing about this information and that we are giving is like, we we encourage you and empower you to share it with somebody else. You know, there's like, hey, this is, this is, this is what I learned. That's, that's why we love doing these community mm -hmm. conversations. So, because it truly is a conversation for sure. So, mm -hmm. um, Celia, I saw that you put your, did you have a question that you want to share? Oh, no, no. Okay. Someone in the chat said, thank you, ladies, for sharing your knowledge with us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So please, when you come back next week, bring somebody <laughs> with you. Invite <Yes>. somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. So um, I think we're good in the Facebook chat too, right, Celie? Yep. If you yep. had that link, um, I'll copy yep. it and send it over to you. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. So, um, so just to close this out, yeah, invite the whole island. Yes, please do that. <laughs> thank, thank I you, love Millie. that, Melly. <laughs> thank you, Melly. Yes, invite them all <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, and uh, Ladonna said thank you. Yeah, no, we we love this. Like I said, it's we we want to continue to do this. So, in the chat, we put um, the uh, event survey link, and if you could fill that out, that helps us, Sal and I, to continue to ask for funding so that um, 
uh, we can continue to offer these free community conversations. Since like I said, we're in October will be two years we've been running this because not only do mm -hmm. we do this with King County, we do it with other communities uh, and organizers as well. And so again, you know, come next week, please come next week. Next week we we're talking about know your feelings. <laughs> and I'm excited about that one. Um, because in regards to how we talk about feelings, we always bring in the cultural context uh, of it all. Um, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us because that's what we are here for. Um, so with that being said, we thank you all. We appreciate you, all, appreciate you all so much. And I'm going to pass it on over to Celie so he can close us out. So thank you all. Yeah, thank you both. This is uh, really good information. Um, I, I like this class the most just because it comes from that cultural perspective and the pillars and just kind of knowing how to massage and navigate these conversations with your family and friends. But remember, remember, if you feel like you can teach it, you can't. Um, tell them to come to this class and then meet Sal and Scarly. Um, like some of the principles, I mean, things you can take away from it. But um Really, please, if you can help us fill out that um, document, it really gives us um, kind of numbers, stats, perspectives that we can share with some of our funders. Um, and yeah, we uh, there's a little bit of sun left out there. So we just thank you for spending your evening with us and have a good night.